안녕하세요. 네, 안녕하세요. 네, 은상호입니다. 네. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So thank you so much for speaking to me. Four years since train to Busan. So where we saw people trapped in a train and with zombies in a bullet train. Now we get a sequel to Peninsula. Did you have this sequel in mind when you were making uh, Train to Busan? When we were shooting Train to Busan, we went seeking for a lot of different locations. And in that process, I began to get a lot of uh, very creative imaginations with, uh, as I discussed them with the crew and I, we got a lot of ideas. Um, whether we were really going to create that into something, I didn't really deep dive into that at the time. But afterwards, as we talked a lot about these different ideas with the production company, uh, you know, we came to the conclusion that it would be very interesting to create the story of Peninsula. Also, making a sequel comes with its own challenges. And also, you yourself had said you were a little reluctant to make one in the same genre. So what made you change your mind? And also, we see a lot of action and adventure in this vis-a-vis -vis what we saw in Train to Busan. When we say the sequel to Train to Busan, it felt like I was being requested to create a film that was in the same category in terms of tone and manner with uh, Train to Busan. And at the time, I was not interested in creating something that was very similar. Um, however, in the process of planning for Peninsula, I, I believe that it was going to be a completely different tone and manner from Train to Busan. And I also felt like this was a rare opportunity and also one that will not return um, for me to create a post-apocalyptic action adventure. So I began the project thinking that I was going to create something that was completely new and different from uh, Train to Busan. Peninsula also is, uh, has a bigger budget and also there's a lot of use of English that I noticed. Uh, you know, in the movie. So was this intentional, keeping in mind the international market and the growing popularity of uh, Korean cinema and television? As for the English lines that you saw in the film, I didn't put them in thinking that I wanted to put in some elements that were going to be more appealing for the global market. That was not the reason. It was actually because I had to start at some point where I would be re-entering this universe that was created four years ago. So it had to begin from a foreign place, which is why in the beginning of the film, there are some English lines. All right. And also the female cast, I've noticed that they were in the forefront of Peninsula and they were given a lot of traits and specialities, which one associates usually with the male actor. So was that something that you wanted to delve in, you know, empower the female protagonists in this particular movie? Because the story of Peninsula starts at a backdrop with a fallen world, um, and this is not only talking about the physical aspects, but also the system that used to hold the world in place, all of that has fallen. And so I thought that in this particular world, the former um, figures and elements or entities that led the former universe, uh, namely the male male figures, uh, and that includes the army, they would have um, fallen and made way for people that were not so much in the front lines in the older world, so um, children and women, that these kind of people would now be the on the forefront in this new world. Uh, so that's how I imagined it would be. And especially uh, for children, these children would be more used to the post-apocalyptic world, and that would be their norm in this particular universe. So I believe that, and of course, children tend to be very easily, uh, they tend to easily adapt to new circumstances. And I believed that in such a world, children could even be more, um, uh, more adept in the new world compared to the adults even. And also, uh, working with your actors in Train to Busan, we had uh, Gong Yu. Indians are huge fans of him. And now he, we have, uh, you know, well-known veteran actors like uh, Gang Dong Won and Lee Jung Kyu. What is it like? How do you pick up your actors? Uh, I mean, do you write with them in mind or does that happen organically? Um, in Korea, people would often joke around about who they would prefer. Is it Gong Yu or Gang Dong Won? Um, because, you know, these two are one... 
two of the most popular actors, and they also are the same, uh, similar age, and they're obviously very good looking actors. So we joke about you know, who do you prefer among the two. Um, in the beginning, for the role of Tong Tok, I wanted someone that could do a lot of action and also had sort of a comic like look to it. And that led me to think of Kang Won. Um, and as for the character Bin Dong, this is a character, the female character that is very fragile, but also extremely strong. And the actress Lee Jung Hyun, she started out as a child actor, and also in the 90s, she was actually a very popular um, singer in Korea. And she had a very, very unique and never before seen type of character during that time. So, from the very initial stages, I thought of Lee Jung Hyun for the role of Min Jung. And as for the character Juni, because this was such an important character in the film, I met with a lot of um, candidate actors. And when I first met Lee Day, I felt like she was the closest to the Juni that I had imagined to be. So I was actually quite surprised. and um, just a fun story, in Korea a few years back, it was actually revealed that Kong Yu and Kang do are related, so that was quite the buzz. Wow, wow. Um, well, it's really interesting. You don't know how popular Korean content is yet, but uh, you know, the zombie genre is something Earlier people thought it was a dying genre, but we're seeing a lot of films and narratives being retold in that genre. And it's very popular with filmmakers. Why are you so attracted towards this particular genre yourself? Um, well, when it comes to fictional creatures, I believe that their very existence uh, leads way to fable fables and they serve as a sort of a fable in the world because their very existence has a lot of social meaning contained and their um, and the, the form in which they are in which they exist really gives a lot to the um, creators imaginations and really fuels creators imaginations. Um, obviously, in the world of cinema, there are a variety of fictional creatures. However, there's the issue of copyright. So, for example, I cannot create a movie with using the Hollywood version of Alien, right? So, um, in the past, when uh, director George Romero created the zombies, it's good news for the creators that he didn't copyright them, but because that was what helped other creators in the future, uh, that was what really laid the basis for us to do our own work with the material of zombies. So, I think that um, as a film director, I believe we owe a lot to director Romero, and I believe that. That is the reason why so many of us were able to use the subject of zombies to tell our own story. And also, you know, there is growing popularity of South Korean con content, and especially in this lockdown, it seems everybody, everybody across is consuming South Korean content. And also, you know, with Parasite being acknowledged by the Academy. What do you think is the reason that people are resonating with these stories with content that's coming from South Korea? Uh, in a way, I believe that we are living in the era of K-content and K-cinema really being the major or mainstream uh, globally. And I believe also, of course, Parasite has played a very important role in bringing that era about. Um, uh, however, in Korea, many creators, including myself, have been inspired in their childhood in particular 
uh, uh, from various foreign content and foreign films. We are that generation. So in my case, when I was young, I was inspired by a lot of the Hong Kong noir films as well as a lot of Japanese anime because these were the type of content that were mainstream globally at the time. And so I am now a creator that creates stories based on the inspirations that I got from that experience as a child. Um, I think that when a uh, content from a particular country becomes popular around the world and uh, impacts and influences content in other countries, that has a sort of a cycle where that in turn affects other content creators in different countries and they will later become mainstream in turn. So I believe that now Korean content is doing that job and playing that role. And I hope that one day that will inspire a lot of young creators who will later become the mainstream in, um, in the future. So I think that this is a kind of a cycle. And also, you know, your narratives do tend to make social comment. The kings of pig, uh, the king of uh, pig spoke about bullying. Uh, the fake was about religion. The window was about military issues. So, what are you trying to address through the peninsula? Um, I thought a lot about. I, the, the question that I wanted to throw in the process of creating the film Peninsula was I wanted to look at the people that were isolated, that felt desperate. And for those people, how they could invent hope. I think that message is encapsulated in the very last line of the film through uh, Junie's words. And that message is that it's not about the situation, it's about what kind of people you surround yourself with. And lastly, have you seen any Indian content or are you familiar with uh, or that you've enjoyed watching if you have? Um, because I have long been or always been in animation, I know that India has an amazing and very vast uh, animation market and industry and also that India has a very high level of te um, technology. Uh, in, in in the field of animation. And I also know that your film market is extremely big. Um, and we often see Indian films at the box offices here in Korea. Recently, because I was very into the horror genre, uh, the recent Indian content that I watched was Ghoul uh, through Netflix. And it was very original, uh, very intriguing, mysterious, and I really enjoyed it. 어, 어, 공포 영화로 굉장히 재밌게 봤던 기억이 있습니다. 감사합니다. And I want to know uh, which is the genre that you want to work in now next after horror and after zombies. I'm currently working on Hellbound, which is a Netflix original series. The genre, you could say that it's a cosmic horror genre. It's a truly uh, intriguing tale about how everyday people react when an unknown being appears in front of them. So um, it is scheduled to launch during the second half of 2021. So hope you uh, will be able to check it out and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.